So here's the question that's been keeping us all awake at night. I'm so tired. Does Beefy Bert have a developmental disorder? Let's start with the theory that Bert's autistic. Because that's a theory everyone loves to run with, right? The man says, I don't know, like it's the only thing he learned in school, and people are like, boom, autism, case closed, right? And sure, we've got the signs. Repetitive speech, check. Social disengagement, check. In fact, Bert's entire family is one giant, I don't know, chorus. Like a Greek chorus, but less dramatic and more confused. Gonna get back. Oh, I don't know. So, when you look at it like that, it does make sense. You've got echolalia, you've got hereditary traits. You ask him a question, he's guaranteed to say, I don't know. Beefy Bird is like a human magic eight ball, but all the answers are the same. I can see why to some people the autism theory fits. But, Here's the thing. Autism is a spectrum and individuals experience it in a myriad of ways. It's a bit much to jump to conclusions or make broad generalizations based on very limited observations. After all, this is a world of one trait wonders. Horrid Henry is horrid. Lazy Linda, well, she sleeps a lot. Pimply Paul has acne. Hey, how you doing? No wonder Francesca Simon, the original author of the Horrid Henry books, has said that she's received letters from parents of autistic children telling her how much they loved her books. In the Horrid Henry universe, says Francesca Simon, you always know where you are, and that's quite reassuring if you have trouble interpreting people. I don't think Bert is autistic, or I mean, I don't think we have enough information about the guy in order to be able to diagnose him. Yes, man got rhythm. But what does that mean? Saying I don't know frequently isn't enough to understand someone's neurodiversity, especially in a world where characters are often exaggerated for comedic effect. But what if we're missing something here? What if Bert's not actually confused? What if he's actually, get this, enlightened? Let's flip this whole thing on its head. What if, I don't know, isn't some sign of developmental delay, but a sign that Bert has ascended to some untouchable, next level state of peace? What if Bert isn't socially awkward, he's spiritually transcendent? Stay with me here. I know I sound crazy. I mean, I make YouTube videos about Horrid Henry. I am crazy, but just hear me out. Now, there's this famous Buddhist poem, right? From the Zen master, Seng Zan, third patriarch of Zen Buddhism. The poem is called Sin Sin Ming, and let me hit you with the best part. Do not seek the truth, only cease to cherish your opinions. The struggle of what one likes and what one dislikes is the disease of the mind. You know what that means? Not knowing is the ultimate freedom. That's right, Bert with his constant, I don't know, isn't just dodging questions. He's freeing himself from the burden of opinions, the burden of decisions, the burden of even knowing anything. The more we try to know, the more tangled our minds become. But Bert, he's free. He's living in that blissful cloud of not knowing, while we're all down here wrestling with knowledge. Ugh, knowledge. Ugh. Let's go deeper. You ask Bert, what's for lunch? He says, I don't know. But think about this. If Bert doesn't know what's for lunch, then he can't be disappointed, right? He can't be angry that it's soggy sandwiches, leftover casserole, or just whatever Greasy Greta decides to throw together. Would you eat this muck? Hell no, you wouldn't. You'd be anxious about eating it all day, too. But Beefy Bert isn't. He's in this permanent state of zen where he's just totally detached from the outcome. No expectations, no attachments. I mean, Bert has reached nirvana, my friends. Nir fricking vana And this is where it all starts to make sense. Perhaps Bert isn't refusing to engage because of a social or cognitive disorder. Oh no, he's transcended the need to engage. He's living the Buddhist teachings, fully accepting of the uncertainty of life, while the rest of us are still trying to figure out if it's going to rain tomorrow. The guy is untouchable. People ask him for answers and he's like, why bother? Why search for answers in a world of impermanence? Whether he knows or doesn't know, it doesn't matter. He's zen, he's like the Buddha in a tracksuit. While we stress over bills to pay and how to make ends meet, Bert's sitting there chilling. Not a care in the world. Ultimate freedom. He doesn't even rise to Henry's provocation when Henry tries to provoke Bert into punching him. Don't you think chucking confection at you shows a certain lack of respect? I don't know. Take my word for it, it does. And if you were to punch me in the mouth and knock my tooth out, I wouldn't even mind, I swear. I don't know. 
I wish I could let go of anger that easily. Now, the clincher, the real cherry on top. Some of you are thinking, yeah, but Bert literally only says, I don't know. How can he be enlightened if he's only capable of saying one thing? You see, that's where you're wrong because Bert is capable of so much more. Oh yeah, there have been occasions, rare but glorious, where Bert has said other things. In Horrid Henry Gets Rich Quick, Bert doesn't just sit there shrugging. Don't Oh no. He walks up to Henry and says, got any food? You got any food? No. That's right, the man speaks. Not just, I don't know, a full sentence. He's got vocab, people. He's just choosing not to use it because talking too much? It ruins the vibe. Then, in Horrid Henry's Magic Mayhem, Bert hits us with some actual wisdom. He goes, I would say that it really depends on which way that you look at it. I would say that it really depends on which way you look at it. Bravo, Bert! Did that make any sense? Yes, that made perfect sense! My dude, that's pure philosophy! That's the kind of thing you'd hear from a guy that charges $500 for meditation retreats in Bali! Trust me, I've been on one. Beefy Bert's way more insightful than those hacks. And then, just to humble us all, Bert asks Henry, did that make any sense? As if he didn't just drop a truth bomb about perspective that shook the entire universe. And let's not forget Horrid Henry Who's Who, where Bert temporarily becomes Brainy Bert. In Henry's fantasy, Bert's IQ skyrockets, and suddenly he's using words that wouldn't sound out of place in a TED talk. But Here's the thing, you don't fantasize about someone being smart unless there's a seed of truth in there. Even Henry knows that deep down, Bert has the capacity for greatness. So yeah, I get why some fans believe that Bert's autistic. Maybe the repetitive speech and social disengagement does point that way. And look, autism is a real serious condition that affects many people in many different ways. It deserves a compassionate, understanding approach. Much love to my autistic viewers. But Bert? Bert's a cartoon character, mate. A dude in a fictional world who only says, I don't know. You can't diagnose a guy who lives in a world where talking hamsters exist. No offense, Fang. Having said that, I am kind of working on a video diagnosing Horrid Henry in a super serious way, and it's going to be over an hour long. Please subscribe if you're interested in that. Please, it's taking so long to write. Sneak preview of the thumbnail here. It's pretty cool, right? Beefy Bert is the human incarnation of the saying, ignorance is bliss. He's just out there vibing, chilling, zenning it up, while the rest of us are just scrambling to keep our lives together. And in that case, he's not just zen, he's a genius. Thank you so much for watching my video. Hit that like button, it really helps me out, helps the channel out, helps me grow. Snipe, snap, out.